Well, hi, Amy. How are Hello. you? Hello. I'm well. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm so happy to see you and excited to, to have a conversation here. Yes, I'm so excited. Thank you so much. It's a privilege to be here. Thank you. Well, um, just um, tell me a little bit about, you know, how, how long you've been at this and, you know, how you came into this process with Target 100. Um, so I can get a little, a, a little background. Yeah, of course. So I actually started this, I think January 9th was the first time um, that um, I was introduced to this. I, I was informed by my gym, my F45 gym here in San Antonio, um, that uh, this was an option and something that they were um, wanting to kind of try out and have members try out and ask me if I would love to do it. And I said, absolutely. And it's been a journey. I've had so much fun. Awesome. So, so you've been at it for a couple of months now, yes. um, you know, tell me, tell me what the biggest thing you've learned so far is. Oh, um, life happens. And that <laughs> <laughs> there has been some things, some some pretty big things happened in my life throughout um, the past couple of months and that have happened. And um, I think just like we talked about um, on our one-on-one -on -one is just giving grace to yourself, which is hard to do because as a perfectionist, um, I expect more for myself. Um, and sometimes in reality, that's not even a possibility. Um, so just giving yourself a little bit of grace Oh, I love that. What a beautiful, a beautiful lesson. And, you know, the ability, you know, as we, as we spoke before, you know, kind of taking that pressure off. And I actually looked back at some of our notes and was, you know, I, remembering our conversation a little bit and about that sort of idea around taking that pressure off and actually making things much, much smaller. Yes. Right? Where did you find yourselves doing things, uh, making them smaller? So I started focusing on the things that I knew that I could control um, and be easier with because um, my dad passed away right after, so nine days after we started this process. Um, so that was a, a really big, um, <laughs> just something completely that I wasn't expecting. And so I had gone and started it and I was very focused and excited and then bam, life happens, right? And so, um, I really just focused on the things that I could really um, truly hone in on, which was exercise because I do that on a regular basis, um, water, um, and then um, more movement. I feel like I've tried to walk more in the afternoon um, because I sit at a desk all day long. So I work out in the morning and then I sit at a desk all day long. And I think um, just walk, I, I kind of started a soccer moms group <laughs> and we've just been walking around um, the play like at star stadium, uh, and just getting a little bit more movement. in. so I started really focusing on those, um, and then just added a little bit extra. So then I focused on my breakfast just to see what I was doing for breakfast and then adding lunch into that and then to dinner, but everything has just been very simplified Nice, and, and more at my own pace, I guess I should say, versus throwing everything out and starting, I don't know, starting over. It's just been a little bit more at my own pace. I love that. Oh, this is what I would hope to have happen. And I'm so sorry that 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 happened and that your your father passed. And, you know, as we spoke before, it, it was just one of those things that, you know, those kinds of life experiences, there's nothing that can prepare you for that, honestly, mm -hmm. right? For the emotions. And then the the you had a lot of work that came out of that experience and you had to 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 drive long distances and you know, truly. Um, to hear you say that that you learned to give yourself grace, but also that you took this at your own pace, which is the thing I wish everyone would do always. But we've been inundated and told, oh, no, no, there's this crazy pace you're supposed to be doing. And if you're not doing that and you're not doing it perfectly, you're not doing it right. Mm -hmm. I love what I'm hearing from you because you you took that time and you took that space and, and, and you, I mean, little things like that, which I think are the cornerstone of like learning that getting support and asking the other soccer moms to go walking is so great. Right. <laughs> and, and target 100 has support in the classes, right. You're seeing mm -hmm. the same people each week. You're in, you're interacting with those same people on the web app. F45 is a giant community of people. Yes. So, 
you seem to have figured something out there. Trying to. Um, I, I do think community is probably the best. I know that like the walking moms have been great just with conversation, just to get your mind off of everything else. And I think that actually has helped me sleep a little bit better, which I, that's probably my worst pillar <laughs> still to this day. Um, and so I just walking with them and getting some um, extra energy out in conversations, good conversations have been really helpful, but yes, you're right. Everything with community has been wonderful. The target 100 community has been amazing. Um, I love looking at all of their stories and listening to their stories and their food that they post looks delicious. <laughs> yeah. And it's just that, that, you know, there's, there's so much science behind community and the support that comes out of it, you know, because in, if, if say you had started a diet in a book on January 9th, and then all the things that happened in your life, it would have been very hard by yourself to stay yes right? Kind of in something. Oh, I would have quit immediately. As soon as all that happened, I would have just been back on. Okay. So today we're going to have water burger because that's quick and easy. And I don't have to think about it. <laughs> it would have been, and I would have just made, um, unintentional, um, bad decisions. Yeah. And, and that's, that's, what's so exciting to me is that you, you, you were here, you saw the power of the community, you stuck with it and you learned things. And this, the message I hope everyone does here is that life is going to happen, right? Always. Sometimes I'll have people say, oh, I'm going to join this course. Oh, look, oh, one of the weeks I'm out of town and like, oh, there might be something over there. And uh, it uh, just, just jump in, take the course, do it because you honestly, life is always going to be there. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you don't even know what's going to happen next week. And with everything that happened with you, instead of eating Whataburger and kind of saying, forget about it, you, you stayed involved with your own wellness, which is so important, right? That is just such an important piece of this. So, so where are you now? You know, like, where are you in your, your own healing process and your grief process? Are you kind of coming to a place where that is, you're feeling a little steadier, like, where are you? Yes. Um, I mean, emotionally, I'm good. Um, I, there's still so much to take care of. So a little bit of the stress level, um, his estate is still uh, about four hours away and uh, getting that cleaned out. I've been up there the past two weekends. It's been a lot. Um, but really, at the end of the day, everything is good. Happy with how everything is turning out. I know that my sister and I are capable of doing all the things. And so that's been um, nice to be able to, to take care of. And, um, but I, I, I've actually printed out all of the, the papers and made copies. And so I'm still doing everything that um, we've talked about and learned about on Mondays and at my own pace, just because it, it was a lot at first. And so, and I've, gotten on the majority of the Monday calls. I think I've missed a few just because I was out of town with that, but I've gone back and watched all of the videos um, just to make sure that I'm up to date on everything. And just the knowledge that, that I learn every single Monday, listening to what you're teaching, but also the experiences that others have has been so beneficial. I love that so much. That's amazing. Um, so what, is, you know, where are you now? Because as we think about, you know, kind of really making a move forward together tonight, when you think about the things that challenge you the most, you know, is it a particular pillar? Is it a particular meal? Is it a particular time of day? You know, what is it that when you think like, you know, if you print out that behavior modification worksheet and you go and it asks that question, you know, what is that behavior that's standing in the way of your, you know, progress or your weight loss or your, you know, what is that? What, what comes to mind when I ask you that question? Oh, stress, I think. Mm -hmm. I think right now it's still just kind of that. I think trying to um, figure out sometimes with, with life. And I mean, like we've talked about the whole time, life in general, my, my kids have soccer practice every day of the week. I think Friday night is my only free night. Yeah. <laughs> and then of course the kids want to do something or friends come over or something like that. So that's not really a free night. So I think, I think that and trying to have a, a, a good balance of, of work life plus learning plus, um, all of the activities, I think stress and sleep, probably those two are probably my most hindering 
Mm -hmm. And those are the ones that often get the biggest bang. Like when we teach them in the course, it's like, people are like, why didn't anyone ever tell me a lot of this stuff? I never yes. even knew how it was affecting the bottom line for me, right? So, um, wow. I mean, that's a lot. I have two boys. So, so sometimes, you know, there's two sports going on in one mm -hmm. night. You know what I mean? Like I, I I've never done that. Um, and it's, it's only for a season, right? Like it's not all the time, but it's very intense in the spring when it starts picking up like this. So, um, so let's talk a little bit about how are you managing those nights? Are you bringing your meals? It sounds like now you're walking with the ladies. Like, how are you, how are you? Cause that's, that was what I realized was the stress was like, and now everybody still has to eat and the laundry still has to get done, but I don't have any time. Right. Yes. So wondering how you're, how you're doing and maybe we can tweak some stuff in there. I actually recently, just this past week, I signed back up for HelloFresh. Um, just because it's, I think the, so much of what my struggle is, is trying to figure out dinner and then a quick enough, healthy enough dinner that I can do from the time that, cause I pick one kid up and then I go home and then I drop him off. And then I go back and pick up another kid. Cause they're in two different schools I have to come home. I have like a 45 minute window of trying to throw something together. And really so much of the stress is I have no idea what I'm going to do. I have to. I'm so much better at planning my breakfast and lunches and then dinner comes around. I'm like, oh, I forgot to lay something out for dinner or, oh my goodness, I need to do this or just something yeah. like that. And then I'm, I'm throwing something random together. That's not probably the healthiest. So um, I signed back up for HelloFresh and I think that's going to make a huge difference. My yeah. first package comes on Saturday. Okay. <laughs> so I think that'll um, help a lot of the stress aspect of um, what I'm doing for dinners, yes. which is, I feel like so much of my stress. It's so much. It's so, so much. And I think also, so I, I love that you've ordered HelloFresh. I love these tools that are available to us guys. Yes. That's again, like if you're listening, Target 100 does not discriminate against your food plan. Like whatever your food plan is, we're here to support it, right? Like if you want to count points, fine. If you want to get HelloFresh, fine. If you want to do keto, fine. I don't care. We're here to help you change behaviors, right? Uh -huh. And recognizing that this tool works for you and has worked in the past and then taking the action, right? Which is much of what we teach you in the worksheets, taking that action. I, I love it. I think- also, just from my perspective, we can brainstorm a little bit around, because I'm so much in your boat, around what are the, what's that sort of second level and third level down? And I actually keep a list of these things, right? We call it the 555 worksheet, but I actually have a 555 of just dinners, you know, alone. And it's sure there's one level of like, hey, this is one of those nights and I'm going to actually make a dinner that... Okay, uh -huh. that next level down of like, okay, tonight is like chicken sausages and frozen broccoli, right? Because that literally takes three minutes. Mm -hmm. Sausages are cooked. The broccoli I put in the microwave, like, and bam, I have a dinner in five minutes, you know? So let's just brainstorm a little bit around those like other five minute dinners for you. And then are you eating then and then becoming the Uber driver or are you eating mm -hmm. while you're at soccer? Like, how are you doing that? No, I actually eat early. Um, I prefer just because I start my day so early that I prefer to get my dinner out done early. My husband does not love that so much, but it works for me and the kids. So. Okay, great. So you've do got, you've kind of got it down, right? You've got that piece of it down. I mean, I, yes. I used to bring for baseball, which is starting up again, I've got a whole routine where I actually bring my dinner. It's such a long game. And sometimes those are long more. games. <laughs> Oh my God. That I'm like, I, I've started to bring my dinner because it gives me something to look forward to. <laughs> so, I love that. Yeah. But soccer, those games are pretty quick and they're pretty action packed. So that's good. Okay. They are. They are. And we, my husband and I both played um, our whole lives. So oh, it's, no. it's really fun watching both the kids play and enjoy it and really love it. So it's just a different, different aspect, I guess. Or So you were an athlete. I used to be, I, yeah. I guess I still am. You I still work out every day. So I am an athlete. Yes. an athlete. I'm sorry. I shouldn't ever use that the word, but I say that because the, 
when I meet clients and I've worked with so many people, I, I love when I'm really talking to an athlete because you guys really have like this sort of like get it done mentality of mm -hmm. like, you know, you, you just push, you push yourselves. Um, but I, I feel like, you know, you're sort of learning to balance that uh, piece of it with like, okay, there has to be some grace here. I can't do it. A lot of grace. Yes. <laughs> I can't do it all. Um, so what in the past has helped you with stress? Working out. That's your big stress reliever. That, that's my big stress reliever. I really think that, um, just the exercise pillar in general has been, um, is it's my sanity. I guess you could say really, I, yeah. I enjoy it. I wake up every single morning. I look forward to it. I do it so early that I don't have time to think about, oh gosh, there could be battle ropes today. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Those are the worst, but they are the worst. That, that and burpees. I mean, yeah. they are the worst. They are the worst. The worst. <laughs> we had to do them today. Yeah. They were not fun, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you have this like sort of built in stress reliever in your life because you're a regular exerciser, yes. right? Um, but it, again, it is one of those things that does, if, if, if I don't do it, like I'm just a different person during the day, I'm totally with you on that. There are plenty yes. of people who really struggle to even start the exercise pillar for many, mm -hmm. many months, but that's not your, not your issue. And you've, co you've connected it to the fact that it really does um, benefit you on many, many levels. It's not just yes. calorie burn or any of that. It's, it's mm -hmm. so much more, um, but it sounds like stress is still a big piece of your life, right? Like even after that. So it's, it's taking the edge off uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and you're pulling in these sort of ways, like getting HelloFresh that are going to reduce that stress. I'm going to tell you the number one stress that I hear from women is dinner. It is because there's, you have picky eaters like my son. And then my daughter isn't picky, but she'll, she'll pretty much any, so she's easy, but then my husband doesn't really always love some of the things that I make. So he's like, well, why don't we make this? So it's always just trying to please everyone, right? Like you're constantly just trying to please everyone and you can't at the end of the day. So there's grace again, we're going back to grace. There you go. Right. <laughs> right? You can't please everyone at the end of the day. And not. Yes, right. And, and it is funny, like, it sounds like you sort of take ownership. I think that's another thing that, that a lot of women do is they take ownership over that. Like I do. Mm -hmm. And, and again, so many times where I've really found it helpful is to actually share the load and say, Hey, husband, what's his name? Nick. 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 Uh -huh. Tuesday night is your night. Even if it's one night, uh -huh. then it's just like being able to say like, Hey, I'm just gonna, I don't care what you do, right? I'm not gonna judge it, but I just need you to take Tuesday night or I need you to take Thursday night. You just pick one night. Maybe he's already helping and I'm guessing he is very helpful because you know, men these days are very, very helpful in all ways. But thinking of ways to kind of, you know, streamline that dinner process, right? So like with a lot of times we'll do like just coming up with a theme for a night, like it's Taco Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Wednesday night is Nick's night. And then we've got two Hello Freshes. And on Friday night, it's pizza night or whatever it is, right? Uh -huh. I love that. Getting a really loose, it doesn't have to be crazy, but it's more like a loose assignment. So everyone's on the same page, right? Like, hey guys, it's Taco Tuesday. It's yes, no questions here. And it's super easy. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I'm hoping that's helpful. That is very helpful. Yes. Yeah. And I just usually make everybody aware, like, this is kind of how we're going to roll, uh, because this is what I need. Right. And then you mm -hmm. probably have one night a week that you're going out or you're out at friend's house. Right. I just like using that sort of weekly calendar, mm -hmm. really loosely, you know, and, and again, like the convenience foods, I want us to like really brainstorm, you know, do you have some of those meals that come to mind that are just like, you know, we'll just like make ground beef big, big pot of ground beef on a Sunday and then use it. We make ground beef quesadillas one night and the next night we're putting it over pasta with red sauce and we're like turning it into a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know if that's helpful as well. It is. I actually started following, I think this lady named Lauren Allen. I don't know where I found her, but she actually sends me an email every single week. And it, it's kind of like that. It's one of those things that um, you can reuse, you know, make extras and then reuse that for this meal and stuff like that. And I have taken, 
um, some of her meals into, um, and put it into work in my house. And, and some of it hasn't um, made it there yet. Cause I haven't looked at all of her emails, but I need to. Do you know what another thing I do for easy dinners is I have just a big plastic pages notebook. Like it's like a three ring binder with like uh-huh. plastic pages. And when I find something that everyone's like, that was awesome. And it's so easy for me. I immediately print it up and put it in the notebook. And then when I have no ideas, like I'll flip through it and actually in Target 100 in the recipes section, Mm -hmm. like my top 10 things are in there. And there's like a chicken fajita sheet pan recipe that literally takes five minutes to make it, right? So, So I think like, again, it's like this, it's like, it's like having something that's a repertoire of things that you can pull from really easily to reduce that stress because we're just going to keep coming back to that stress piece. And if this is sort of that number one thing that you are reporting and people are reporting, trying to make it simpler. So I love this idea. Do you think Nick's up for taking a night? Oh yeah, absolutely. You'd be up for it. And he's actually a really good cook. So Awesome. He'll probably cook steak. It'll probably be steak every week. That's fine. That's yeah, fine. Everyone likes steak. <laughs> Whatever, as long as, but can you imagine just waking up on, I'm just saying Tuesday, but waking up on a Tuesday and knowing that you don't. That I'm not responsible for it. it. It's beautiful. It really <laughs> is beautiful. <laughs> you know, if he's up for two nights, you know, don't push your luck. But like, <laughs> I think it's really funny that I do end up on these calls with you know, many of our, our members are female and it's such a funny thing that we kind of take it on. And, and many times when we start asking for the help, people are absolutely happy to do it. Yeah, they are. Yeah. So, and he would be And but I think it's so funny because we've been together for 20 years almost. And so I think way before kids, you know, this is what I wanted. I wanted to be able to do the dinners and, and provide all that. And then you get so busy. You're like, oh gosh, what did I get myself into? (laughs) Well, it's like everything when we do it and we don't feel like we have any option, right. Then it becomes a job. And so this, I love this idea of like, now we've got some HelloFresh in the mix. We'll, we'll, you know, think about some, some really easy breezy things, put them in a notebook, keep that handy. And then just maybe just briefly look at your week on a Sunday and just go, okay, Nick fajitas, HelloFresh, pizza night, taco on Tuesday. Boop. Yeah, that's and awesome. I have to think any more uh, about it. So, so hopefully we reduce some stress there. Tell me how stress manifests for you. What happens when you, when you get into that stress state? Oh, whenever I get really, uh, I'm about to get into my busy time of work. And just sometimes I like not necessarily panic attacks, but I almost feel like it's a panic attack. Like I, I definitely feel, um, the tightening of the chest and the breathing, um, becomes very overwhelming. And, um, so trying to, and really my biggest thing is I recognize that I start, I can feel it and I can step away and I can take deep breaths and I can do some of the breathing treatments and just really focus on, on the calm. Um, I've got, I think that's one of the biggest things I've learned from you is the awareness, like even with water. I mean, I was drinking so much water before, but not consistently. And now that I've been consistently drinking so much water and having to go to the bathroom every five minutes, it's fine. Um, it has been, I I can feel it like even in my hands or my mouth, whenever I'm not had enough water, it's just the awareness. I think so much of everything has been being aware of my, how I'm feeling. Wonderful. I, I, yeah, again, like, and, and funny that you're connecting the hydration. Actually, they really do say if, that people experience much higher stress when they're dehydrated. So really? Symptoms become much worse. So mm. I'm wondering if even with the hydration, as we go into your busy period, if you can really stay focused on it, that though, because you can imagine, right? What does our body need more than anything in the world? water. water. Mm-hmm. So the second that it feels like it doesn't have enough of that, it does become stressed. You're it already, it's like your eyes are like, uh-huh. right? You go from being like, right? It's just your whole body goes into that mode of like, okay, 
where is it? Where is it? When are we going to get it? When are we going to get it? When are we going to get it? Right? So there's extra. And especially if you're, if you're experiencing panic, like symptoms that Mm -hmm. very much be connected to hydration. So I love for us to stay focused there. Really like use your bottle. uh, Like uh, I do. This is, this is my favorite thing ever. I love that I don't have to think about it. I just drink it and it tracks everything for me. That is genius. It's genius. Right? Genius. Oh, and you're talking like, about stress relieving. I mean, people attract their waters and this right here, I don't even have to. It just does it for me. It's great. <laughs> don't even have to, right? So I love that, that let's stay focused on that hydration. Uh, now, especially that we're going into this busy season and you've mm-hmm. got kids in sports, let's align those dinners because they'll take that right off your back. Um, and then I think, you know, figuring the fact that you're aware and you know when it's beginning or you're when you're beginning to feel that way and that you're that you're giving yourself permission to step away from what it is that you're doing. Mm-hmm. What I learned from a, coaching a lot of perfectionists and, and sort of being a recovering perfectionist myself is, you know, we often think we're just going to keep driving, like no matter what, we're just going to go because we haven't gotten it done yet, right? Uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> and and Ashanti, Coach Ashanti has a great saying. She says, I'm going to mess this up, but you can't get it done because you can't get it right. And I always was like, what does that mean, Ashanti? And then she's like, you can't get it done because you can't get it right. So you Mm -hmm. can never get it done because you can never get it right. So you just keep doing, right? Which creates stress and tension and panic, Mm -hmm. right? So I think for you, thinking about going into this busy season, um, you know, it sounds like you've been there before, right? Like what you're going into is not the unknown. Right. You've actually survived it. You've come down with the other side and it actually- Every up. year, every <laughs> for the yes. past 17 years, every year. <laughs> well, and we have 17 years of proving. <laughs> yes. We're gonna get it done, right? Um, and your 17 years of experience says to me that like, oh, there's so much experience there that uh, when, you know, the idea of you getting a B in this, right? Like, and- not literally, I'm sure you have to get an A job, but because you're so good at what you do, taking some of that pressure off yourself and giving yourself those breaks that you need. I I think we should think of preemptive breaks rather than adapting to the The feeling that arises, getting in front of it and thinking about that where can we put like just a little stepping away from your desk in your day, like um, getting outside into the the vitamin D, uh, going into a conference room and putting on insight timer for two or three minutes or taking some deep breaths as a preemptive measure versus mm-hmm. the waiting for it to hit. Because once it hits, right, what I've taught you is we've gone into the adrenal adrenaline, the adrenals have turned on and now we're in the state. Right. And, and we can't avoid ever not being not right. never in the state, but we can, right, kind of keep that engine like I was teaching you keep the engine running on low stress, right? Keep your keep yourself in front of it, just like hydration, right? Once you get past the point, then you're, ha- you're kind of low key and you have a headache and like, and it takes a long time to catch up to it. So I want us to think preemptively. What are you thinking as I say that? What could you do that might? be a a way to rethink your day or your schedule or how you do things? I have a pretty, um, although it's busy, I have a pretty flexible schedule. I'm very blessed in that way. So I could definitely get outside and maybe walk around the building just to get some fresh air for a few minutes and then come back in um, and maybe do that a couple of times a day. Or just even, we've talked about just moving into um, just going downstairs and just getting away from my office just for a minute, just for a different view. Yes. Well, and again, these things aren't going to happen because they're not your regular pattern. You're not going to think to do this. You're going to stay in your pattern. Another thing that creates a lot of stress is being seated, right? Being seated, being dehydrated. uh, Those are two of the more stressful occurrences for your body because you are, you're, you're, you're kind of, crushing your 
Mm -hmm. right? You're hunched over it. And especially if you're on a computer, you've reduced the oxygen intake into your body. So the fact that you can get up, get outside or get up and go downstairs or like whatever it is, I want you to set those alarms because they won't, okay. we need the, we need the water bottle for stress now. My dear. A, get up and go take your dose. And I want you to think of it like a dose, right? A dose of stress relief prior to you getting into that space of it, mm -hmm. right? So it's-, it's And I have a stand-up desk too, so that's kind of nice. I do stand up periodically throughout the day just because I do feel like the posture part of it, there are some times I'm just like, oh gosh, I'm going to be that lady <laughs> that's like this. <laughs> totally, right? Um, so I love this idea of preemptively kind of getting into that just a little bit. And I, I wonder how this season will be for you, this busy season with all of these new kind of ideas floating around your head of like, oh, wait, it's not just like I go into a tunnel, a, a cave and, and, and come out when it's over, right? But no, I preserve myself throughout the entire season. My, my wellness and my self-care are a big part of this. Mm -hmm. I would say that when I go into busy seasons, you know, January for a weight loss expert, like I am eating my best. I'm like an athlete in training, right? And so I want you to think of yourself that way versus where I think most people's brain go is like, oh, I can't possibly take care of myself. I'm too busy. I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't do this. I can't do that. And I want you to be exact the opposite. Oh, I am an athlete. I, I say this to myself in January as a weight loss expert. I'm like, I am getting my exercise. I'm drinking my water. I'm going to bed on time. I am doing all of those things because I am in my, I'm in my performance mode. Mm -hmm. I want you to bring it back to being an athlete and taking care of the, yourself the way you would have prior to a big tournament. Well, and that's so funny because I know before starting this, I was kind of like that. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so busy. I have this going on, this going on. And I wasn't aware of nearly any of the things that I was doing. Everything was so habitual. Um, and whenever you and I talked and just when we talked about simplifying things, it really is funny how simple it is to, to talk about it and see the changes that we can do. Um, but not putting two and two together on your everyday go, go, go life. Yeah, and so that's that, been, that was super just beneficial, I think for myself. I love it. That's, that's such a very important key part of this is the simplification of this all. Um, and then the waking you up so many of us and people ask me all the time, like, why do you do these courses? And why did you design this the way you've designed it? Like the, the, the devices are there to trigger behavior, right? The water bottle is there to trigger behavior, the, the step and the scale and all this there to trigger behavior, then surround you with the community and the education, and mm -hmm. then create to kind of lift you out of the habitual patterns that you're in and make you wake up just enough to go, Oh, okay. I see. I see. Like, I and none of it's re, none of it's real or true. Doesn't need to be that way, right? Mm -hmm. and I was telling a funny story on my on the Monday night call of that. Like, I make coffee the same way in a habitual pattern every single night before I go to bed. Always grind my coffee beans. You were there. You heard this story, <laughs> but like. I went and bought ground coffee and didn't realize it and poured the ground coffee in the coffee grinder and was like, not even awake. Like it wasn't <laughs> even like it did, right? We are so asleep 50% mm -hmm. of our day, right? With really important patterns that are really getting you something. But when they're not, right? Being aware enough to recognize what's not working, mm -hmm. those changes and trigger those behavior modifications. Anything else you think would be helpful? We talked quickly about you sleep. You said you think you've noticed that the, the walking, because they are all connected, the yes. walking is making the sleep better. I do. And then I, after you and I talked to you, I, well, I think it was actually in the group, we talked about magnesium and I started taking that a little bit more consistently. Um, and I feel like that's also helping. Um and then I, I focused on trying not to have caffeine after 11 a.m. Now there are, this past Monday, I did have a little bit and I didn't regret it. It was fine. <laughs> I still slept fine. 
<laughs> but just um, paying attention to my caffeine intake throughout the day. Cause I think um, I don't drink a lot of caffeine, but coffee, I will have uh, one or two in the morning. And then um, sometimes like 2 PM is when I start really crashing. And so I'll have something. And I think that has, that's terrible. I should never do that. Cause then I really don't sleep and I have to go to bed so early because I wake up so early. <laughs> wake up so early. Yeah. Yes. Well, great. I mean, that's a wonderful, like you're capping it like, and mainly sticking to that. Right. Again, we get to be on all things. We don't need to be perfect, but yes. most days, and you've noticed the payoff is that I sleep better and I fall asleep more quickly or whatever it is. I downloaded um, the calm app too. I think we were talking about that in the group also. And I've actually really enjoyed that. I think I've, I've never had a problem falling asleep. My problem is staying asleep throughout the night. And I think it just makes me go into a really deep sleep fast. <laughs> Very good. Oh my gosh. I love that. And definitely the magnesium's helped me um, for sure. You know, that that's something I take every single night. And again, habitual patterning wise, right? You want to keep it somewhere that's attached to another. When you said consistency, I was thinking like keeping it somewhere that it's attached to another habit. So I have it right by my toothbrush up in my thing so that I can't. I'm like, oh, Forget. like my coffee, like uh -huh. I'm not even present. Sometimes I'm like, did I take my magnesium? I can't remember because I wasn't even awake while I was brushing my teeth, right? Because yes. it's not present. So, um, so just keep attaching it there for that consistency. Okay. Um, this is awesome. Well, and you have been, uh, you're, you're an avid F45 member. You're, you're a workout queen. What is your, you know, what is your, um, experience in putting F45 and target 100 together? Like what, how, how has that been for you? Um, I just think that the two coincide so well with, like we had talked about before is the community aspect of it. Um, I, I personally am one of those people that enjoys the learning part of it. And so everyone has just been so beneficial when they're, they're always there. They're always willing to help. They're nobody's shy. They'd sit there and talk. They tell about their experiences and stuff like that. And at 45, just them being there and knowing that they're my accountability is the same way with Mondays. It's the accountability aspect of it. And I love, I love both of those. I love the community part of all of it. I think it, it definitely holds everyone accountable. Oh, I'm so glad. Yeah. I mean, it is, it's a magical thing. It, it's really that it's all that we've got at the end of the day uh, to, to kind of share our experience and listen from other people's experience to go, Oh, oh, someone else has had this problem before and I'm not on my own to, to, to get through this at all. So <laughs> just feel like, okay. Um, and we run out of ideas in our own heads, right? Like we do. I, I, I always say we're like horses with blinders on all the time. We can only see what we can see. And then all these people are sitting there going and giving you this idea and this idea and this idea. I mean, I saw your shoulders come down with the, just the ideas around dinner prep. Uh -huh. you know? So then you go, oh, okay, so this is doable in my life. She's not saying to go do something crazy that I can never sustain. I actually like that idea and it's working for her. So maybe I'll give that a try too. So, yes, good. So, um, so, so they've, they've been a good combo. I, 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 my dream was to put them together because I love at 45 myself and then having something that was 24 seven outside of those doors to support me you know, was going to be a big piece of this. So I'm excited that that's been your experience. No, I, I do. I, I very much love it. I actually look forward to the Mondays and meeting with everyone and listening to, to the new things that we're learning. And then the last couple, we've been putting everything together, which is really interesting to me. And again, I've been kind of going a little bit slower, a little bit more at my own pace, but um, I love, I love watching and listening to everyone that has done it exactly week by week. And so I'm excited to keep going and keep doing that. Oh, I love it. I love it. So, um, so we're working on, you know, again, we're all recovering perfectionists. I love some of these ideas that we came up with for you on the stress side. Um, you know, just really considering preemptive stress relief, mm -hmm. um, thinking about those dinners, right. Getting a little support there, um, you know, and, and really, you know, continuing to do your exercise and really thinking of yourself as that athlete who's in training as you go into this season that's coming for you. Mm -hmm. um, 
I also want you to imagine, you know, sometimes when we have a life where we've been doing something for 17 years, sometimes we go into it and we are, we're relying on past experience, right? Of like, well, it's going to be like this and it's going to be like this. It's going to be like this because Mm -hmm. that's what it's been like before. I'm wondering if you can drop some of that expectation around how it's going to be. Um, and again, opening your mind to new ways of doing this thing that you've been doing for 17 years. And, and we've come up with a few things that, that are little shifts in your patterns during the day. But what else could you take, right? Because I always say Target 100 isn't just about the six pillars. It, it, it's habit formation and behavior modification. Mm-hmm. That you should be pulling into your entire life, right? Like what could you be thinking of in that work life of yours that you could streamline or change or make different or or shift just slightly so that it was better for you. And I think some of the big buckets that we're touching on here are, you know, dropping that perfectionism, like asking for help. These are two things I would say uniquely um, to, to, to females, right? Ask for help and, and drop for perfectionism. Get and that. those are the two hardest things. <laughs> do you know when you're in that perfectionist mode do you, can you feel it now I do I definitely and I feel like I'm in there a lot I try not to I try to I try to get out of it it's hard and I'm, I'm learning to ask for help I'm still it's still a work in progress but I'm learning for all of us I mean at least myself I can commiserate on that for sure um you know but I love that you are aware enough to feel it that you're there because that's really how I started to move away from it. But it's really painful to just be like, okay, I'm going to send this email now. I want to reread it one more time. And I want to spell check it one more time. And I want, but I'm like, nope, boop, moving on. Uh It's a very hard thing to do. It's very uncomfortable, but I'm hoping some of the stuff we taught you here is like that the discomfort is okay. Yes. It's okay. Right. And, and if we can get you I, I would love to have you visualizing coming out of the end of this part of your year that's stressful and feeling really good about it and, and not coming out of it depleted and having had panic attacks and right. Like I want you to actually be like, I did that. So I did it and I did it better this time. Right. Mm-hmm. Like I, that's my real wish for you. So um, keep that in your mind as you think about your, your work patterning, your work habits, your work, you know, kind of behavior. What can you do? What can you, what small shifts and behaviors can you pull out that, that will make a change for you as you go through this? Cause it sounds like this is part of your life. Yes. You know, it and it's not a bad life. It's a, no. it's a good life. It's just part of it. <laughs> part of it and we can always be improving on it but that's as I say sometimes when we've been doing it for a long time we just kind of believe that that's the way that it's gonna go mm-hmm. well, it's it habit, can- right it is. yeah well and we kind of then bring that to life we bring that to life because mm-hmm. we just believe that's the way it has to be mm-hmm. and so I just want to I want to open your mind just a little bit to like okay how could I do this maybe use your worksheets from a different perspective right? Instead of thinking of it in your wellness space and your food and your water and your this and your that, think of, take that behavior modification worksheet and look at it from the lens of work. Okay. And, you know, as well, because that's- That seems kind of fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it gives you a different perspective for sure. It does. It gives you a total shift, but they work in all of those ways. Okay. Okay. So, good. So any other challenges or questions or issues that you're like, really burning need help with? I don't think so. I mean, I think done pretty, like even with everything that has happened and gone on and being um, a little bit slower and going at my own pace, I've been staying in the same couple of pounds, which has been great. (laughs) That's amazing. And just like choosing, um, knowing that even if we do eat out, I have a choice of being intentional or not intentional and there are always options. So I think that has been really good too. Just knowing that at the end of the day, I want to be more intentional and I want to choose something different. And there are things I don't have to not go out there. And then it's still okay to have certain nights of doing, 
you know, pizza or so a lot of, a lot of that has been great. I love it. I love it. Well, I'm so, so excited to hear this. I mean, I, I, what, what you're expressing, the loss of a parent is one of the more stressful and difficult um, life changes that anyone ever goes through. Um, mm-hmm. you know, when they really, when they interview people about the most difficult things in their lives, it, it is often reported that, that that is one of them. And um, you managed to take care of yourself many people will look back and gain significant amount of weight in that time after Mm -hmm. the loss of a parent. And what you've done is you have not done that. And that, whoo, that is an incredibly awesome thing. Success. That's huge success. (laughs) I'm, I'm smiling from ear to ear for you. So, well, it's been such a joy. Thank you for giving your time tonight and being here. Um, I'm excited for you to, to continue on this journey with us and, uh, I'll see you in our community and, uh, let me know how you're going. I, I jotted down a few notes, but let me know how, how this season is going for you this busy season and how the, how the dinner tweaks work out. I will. Thank you so much for everything. I really appreciate it. You're so welcome. Have a great night. Good night. Bye. Bye.